for hundreds of millennia, I have remained dormant in the catacombs of the abyss. What fool dares awaken me from my- Oh. Really? Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow, that's, um... Kind of what this video was going to be asking for, so... That's a little... Unfortunate and awkward. Once again, my penchant for being lazy and not getting content out sooner has come back to bite me in the taint. Originally, this video was going to be about recent negativity and how a properly implemented test server could help somewhat. Until D announced, just as I finished this script, that they were doing test servers. So, what now? Now this video is going to be about recent negativity and how a properly implemented test server could help somewhat. Look, I've got no problems in admitting that all I did was reword the script a bit after that announcement, and, you know, it was either that or me scrapping all of this and proceeding to bang my head against the wall for the next two weeks. What? Anyways, it's been a pretty rocky, uh, half a year for Warframe at this point. Sabuchi abandoned ship with all the elegance and grace of a hippo falling out of an airplane, and no, I don't miss him, I didn't cover a wall in Animal Crossing with his face. Shut up! Rotelius drops another atom bomb on the company with results that probably won't surprise anyone with a set of functioning eyeballs, and Scarlet Spear was received about as well as... <laughs> Needless to say, there's been some hiccups in the past few months, putting it mildly. There were a number of sparks that resulted in this video's creation, but let's go back to the man whose face is not on my wall. He put out a video explaining his reasons for leaving, and I'm not gonna go over it in detail as that's not the point of this video. But one of his biggest reasons is that DE is simply not listening to much of the feedback that is being offered to them, or if they are, they're doing so quite poorly. And look, before I kick things off, I first want to extend an all branch real quick to DE and say, I get it. It probably feels terrible to only see voices expressing all of the bad decisions you've made, and yet little of the good decisions seem to get any praise. I can see how it can be irritating to spot people talking about, say, there being nothing to do in the game after they put 3,000 hours into it. And hey, I haven't forgotten the times you've done legitimate good things with the game recently, and I'm all for recognizing when things are done right and not just when they're done wrong. So as my gift to you, DE, here are some pats on the back first. I'm glad that you got around to fixing the randomized color button to actually pick from multiple palettes. I won't forget how Scott went out of his way to put some of my own feedback into Grendel more recently, and I was really appreciative of that. The Jovian Concord was a very solid update that introduced a good new game mode and a very creative, if sometimes buggy boss. You get to ride it into a fucking bug zapper! And much more recently, the Warframe revised update that was handling a lot of the changes to damage types and introduced shield gating was also really, really good despite some small hiccups. Something, something, holy shit did Gas get fucked! And of course, one of my longest standing complaints, self damage, also finally got addressed. So, D. Again, I get it. I get how frustrating this can be and all. But now, let's face some hard facts. You can be better. And a lot of that is down to your attitudes at times. Hema's research costs are still ridiculous, and the costs have been justified with one of the worst defenses I have ever seen. The number of times you've referred to flat-out nerfs as fixes and then acted like the most recent time was a mistake was a slap to the face of everyone. And the panic nerfing of frames like Limbo when Scarlet Spear dropped made it all the more clear that you don't know how the fundamentals of your own game works and how you should build over and around them. And here's the thing, other than that last example, today's topic of test servers won't be a magical fix to these problems. Most of them are down to your responses, DE. I can't fix a company's personal flaws with a game-related suggestion. That's all on you. But what this might be able to help with are issues relating to the game itself that seem to slip past you, such as the aforementioned fact that you missed Hatman foreseeable impact in Scarlet Spear, for example. So for now, let's put aside the issue of company PR, and instead let's focus solely on a more effective way to receive and experiment with feedback. It's those issues that a properly implemented test server should be able to help with. So anyways, 
Yes, DE has announced that they're trying out the use of test servers. Now, I know my community has a higher IQ than me. You know what a fucking test server is. And I cannot underestimate how really beneficial this could be if DE sticks with it. There's plenty of reasons, and it's all on how DE decides how much they pay attention to said server and how much they implement with it. And that's what this video is going to be about. Just what are the big advantages of having one? What issues can it solve better? than other forms of feedback, and just how important is it for them to pay attention to it. But let's say you don't want to sit through the rest of this bullshit. Which I don't blame you a lick for. I have a voice that according to one comment sounds like, and I quote, Chugger Conroy's less successful nephew. Let's say you just want to know how important this is. So, let's just say pretty fucking important. Right now, D's only real way of gathering feedback is through channels like the forums, Twitter, Reddit, or Discord. And there's a few issues with this. One, a lot of good suggestions seem to get lost in the mix because everyone is screaming at once about the really cool idea of giving Mirage a bigger ass. Two, without hands-on experience, we're severely limiting our potential for useful feedback. And three, we're restricted to pretty much only feedback. We cannot help with fixing bugs until the update is already on the public build, causing people to be halfway stuck in fucking walls. But like with issue number one, if you go to report a bug through one of their many channels like mentioned above. Well? So let me first go over one huge issue that DE struggles with that a test server could help with immensely. First impressions. DE has said themselves in the past that they have a sort of philosophy when they're working on an update. Release it in an undertuned or overtuned state at the expense of players and then adjust it over time. So for example, they may release an event where you earn a currency to buy event rewards unique, I know, and they may make earning said currency slow on purpose, or they may purposefully make the prices for said event rewards a little higher than what they might determine to be the baseline. D does this a lot, and as I just said, they have fully admitted to doing this before, and they cite the following reason as to why they do things this way. Instead of angering people by releasing something good and then nerfing it, they err on the side of caution and release it in a state where they can buff instead of nerf. And this strategy makes total sense on paper. Our community is already treating the word nerf as if it was the Black Death. So it makes total sense that DE would want to avoid sticking their corporate dick into the wasp nest. So by releasing things that are not in a player's favor at release, then buffing it afterwards, they present an illusion of avoiding nerfs. Even though in reality said nerfs are already being put into the base release and are just reverted after being dropped publicly. It's mostly a mentality thing. But like with any strategy, there are weaknesses. And this approach delivers a first impression about as classy as dry humping your date's dog. First impressions are everything. And if you release something that is horrendously bad, that impression is going to stick in some degree even after you've improved it later on. Take Railjack's release, for example. Now, this was down to bugs and not purposeful actions on DE's part, to be fair, but let's face it. Railjack will forever go down as one of the buckiest releases in the history of Warframe, second only to... <laughs> and even though they've done a ton of fixes to that side of the game, it doesn't matter in regards to first impressions. The damage has already been done. You think I'm gonna forget the time I had a railjack wall hit the fucking peace out button? The same thing applies to releases with notoriously bad balancing. So while yes, it appears as a sound strategy on paper, there is a significant drawback. But that is not the only downside to it. Because D is not always on the ball when it comes to actually adjusting values later on. Take the case of Baruch. When he first released, he was really not that good. Back then, I likened him to being a worse Excalibur. And even today, I still stick by that when referring to the monk in his release state. And here's something unfortunate. It took over a year for Baruch to get better because they never did balance and fix him after he dropped. Every now and then, DE just seems to 
forget for months or even years at a time to change something that released in a mediocre state. And it's the potential of this happening that creates a sort of what if fear for players. What if they release something that's shit for us but then just forgets to fix it? And this I think can cause some pretty big frustrations with a new release. Because there's never really a guarantee that they'll adjust it later. At least if you release something overpowered that something gets experienced. I don't know about you, but if I was a game developer, I would much rather have players interact with something I made, even if I made it too strong, than for them to do nothing with something that I made too weak. And lastly, I just want to point out the obvious here, you still will make the player base mad, DE just in a different order. Instead of infuriating them with a nerf after an update, you instead infuriate them with your first impression. Nothing you do will prevent some people from being angry. Sometimes you just have to accept it. But this is where a test environment can help out and where we can get the best of both worlds. If something is about to release and you have a focus on avoiding cheese strats, giving it to the hands of players whose definition of a fun weekend night is masturbating with a min-max XL spreadsheet is the absolute best kind of testing you can possibly have in that regard. Because then you can build around that data instead of having to slap players across the face because they end up balls blazing through your update easier than you expected. If there was a test environment for Scarlet Spear, for example, a panic nerfing of frames like Limbo would have never had to happen. And here's why. Many moons ago, I made a tier list for all the frames that were out at the time. And when I covered Limbo, I made something crystal fucking clear. If you have any kind of objective that involves waiting out a timer and not having to kill enemies, Limbo is going to be the best at it. This is simply because he has the absolute strongest defensive measures in the game bar none. Even better than Frost or Gara, he is simply the best at it. So, when Scarlet Spear dropped and it became obvious that a big chunk of the event was just waiting down a timer while looking at your phone's timers, it took me no less than a day to realize what the meta for defense was going to be. It was going to be Limbo. And for some, they probably hit on that factoid sooner than I did. Now, if D had this information before the event dropped, say, if they were getting fed run data from a test server, they could have had more time to make changes to the event itself to help rectify the situation instead of having to take a nerf to the player's toolset, which is a much better outcome for everyone. DE makes the event not as easy, and players are spared a panic nerf. Like I said, many of us realized that this would become the meta extremely quickly because we obviously play the game differently than what DE does. We have a better grasp of the fundamentals of the meta and min-maxing the game. We may not all know how to code, but plenty of us know how to push a game like this to its limits far better than its own development staff. And hey, D is free to deny it all they want, but it is 100% true. If it wasn't, they would have seen Limbo's huge meta dig coming from a mile away. And that is a reason why this test server can be such a big deal if it's listened to correctly. There's no dev hack filters, there's no company bias. It would be the raw, maximized experience of what they can expect on a public build. And this would give them so much more useful information and data than only using their in-house staff. The point to take home is this. A test server could drastically reduce the downsides of their current strategy of releasing updates, infuriating the player base with bad rates, and then fixing them afterwards. So with all that said, let's now go over how DE is accepting folk into the test cluster. And for the most part, it's basically a random draw. And I both agree and disagree with the random draw method, but I'll come back to this in a moment. Like DE, I don't think a test server should be open to everyone. Now, why is that? Simple, an overload of data. I was also originally going to talk about the potential for leaks, and it was probably a reason why they've stayed away from the idea of a test server in the first place, but it looks like for at least right now, they're rectifying that by just not 
giving a shit and just telling us what content they're testing ahead of time. Which is a great mindset for them to have, too, so fair enough. But anyways, back on topic. As I mentioned, access to a test server should be limited, because there would just be an overload of feedback and input otherwise. That's where inviting literally everyone can turn the test cluster into a cluster fuck. Remember how I said near the beginning of the video that there's a lot of good suggestions that get washed out by everyone else? Yeah, that's something I would like to avoid here. A test server should not be as noisy as public forms of feedback. Because again, we're dealing with precise and hands-on data here, so a lot of it is going to be samey anyways. Not to mention that DE would probably be more inclined to utilize a test server if the data points are similar in terms of scale to their in-house testing. At least that's my hot take. Now, in regards to the random lottery, I can't say I think that's the best plan, because while I get the idea a randomized pool could simulate the actual public build of the game, one issue there, Chief. We're pulling people from a form post. A post looking for very specific people and attracting very specific people, not the actual public. And hell, I'm willing to bet that most people who play Warframe don't even follow the whole relationship between players and DE. The public's probably more concerned with staring at Mirage's ass all day, throwing money at the fucking Roombas, and don't even know what a potato does. The other issue is that a random lottery could cause an imbalance in vet to newbie ratios, the former of which is incredibly important because DE needs min-maxing tryhards to show them the potential metas for upcoming events so that the team can work around them without directly nerfing them. Now, that's not to say that newbies aren't important. We do need their input as to whether a new event or update is as easy to get into as pulling teeth, and we also need experienced but still casual players to make sure that DE isn't trying to make an event that tests how well you know your fucking algebra, but you get the point. Right, so the last Last thing that I want to talk about is... Bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. D is really hit and miss with bugs. Sometimes they'll squash a bug the instant it's noticed by the community, usually when it's beneficial, and others they will ignore for months if not years at a time. And it's gotten to the point that certain parts of our community swear that they do this shit on purpose for shits and or giggles. Now, I don't believe that DE is intentionally ignoring bugs. I just think they're often incredibly incompetent and have the memory of a goldfish. And I'm talking about the snack variety, that'd be an insult to actual goldfish, because my entire issue with the whole they do it on purpose argument is... To what benefit? What incentives would DE have to ignore bugs that are making their game clucky? Because last I checked, the only shareholders that get turned on by frustration and misery caused by bugs are already invested into raid. Now, you might say, oh, they do it so they can be lazy and not have to work on them. Which, hey, I, I would actually agree with you on that, because uh, look at me, I'm uploading every Pluto cycle now, but there is a pretty big problem there. We are talking about a company who, in order to give things to their employees, employees to keep them on payroll have made space Roombas and space banjos and then made variants of said space Roombas and space banjos and also made this abomination. And that's not even mentioning all of the incredibly minuscule changes that they make seemingly every patch that none of us cared about or even knew were issues in the first place. D does things that they most certainly do not have to, and in some cases, really shouldn't. So saying that they're not fixing bugs because they're too lazy seems a little off. Nah, I just think collectively they've drank so much maple syrup that their memory is rivaled by that of a trained koala. In fact, I know incompetence is a factor. How's that? Because, fun fact, years ago, Steve did a Periscope stream, and in it, I informed him about the color randomize button not actually picking from multiple palettes. Could you have random color picks from multiple palettes? It should. It, it, it should do that. And in this same clip, he says he will get back to Pablo about it. And uh, I will talk to Pablo about that, because I know when he was uh, first working on it, that was his intention. No prizes for guessing what didn't happen. Then, months later, Pablo makes a reply to a tweet also asking for the randomizer to be fixed. But this was his response. So I reply back to him and say that he's already had his answer for many, many months now. So fast forward sometime later again, and it was finally resolved. Which tells me that Steve just flat out forgot to tell Pablo about the issue. Actually, there was a... I, there was a someone posted a video of a 
2015 dev stream. Oh no. Very recently talking about the mandatory mods. And uh, part of that conversation was difficulty <laughs> selection. Yeah. Was the second part of that conversation was yeah. we should get rid of mandatory mods or we should discuss it. And also we should talk about adding difficulty to the star chart. That was 2015. Now, going back to test servers, because data from a test server, if implemented correctly, would be targeted specifically at a new update, it means that DE would have more of a desirable stream of data and feedback coming in in regards to any potential glitches or game-breaking issues. In other words, a pinpoint focus on a single part of the game could possibly help with their attention span, which hopefully means more consistent bug fixes and reports. Now, I'm fully aware that this won't exactly help bugs elsewhere in the game. Like, uh, the phased Vobent skin has been bugged for like seven years at this point, but eh. Like I mentioned earlier, this video was originally going to cover why we needed test servers. But now the focus I want to make clear is D needs to stick with this as the norm for future content releases. Don't forget it exists and only use it for like one or two more times. Don't fall in the habit of paying less and less attention to it. It desperately needs to be a core of their development workflow from now on. And hey, D. I get that you might want to question that decision when you inevitably roll a player like XXX Pussy Destroyer XXX into the test cluster. By the way, that's a free name for you lot, have at it. But look, the potential for an environment in which your content is not only tested from more angles than you could ever imagine, but also allows for more confident adjustments before release cannot be understated more. Do not let this fall by the wayside, DE. And now, I return to my dormant sleep to be reawakened when the, I don't know, depends if I can get this one video idea to work. We'll see how long that takes. It's quite a fun one though, so I'm gonna try my damnedest to make it work. Hey, did you guys hear about how they